Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be building a 6S FPV setup. However, we're going to be covering all of the step in detail as fast as possible and as efficient as possible for everybody. So let's talk about some of the components. For ESC, I am using the Holybro Tico Mini ESC. I got it with a stack that comes with the flight controller and it also comes with the VTX and all the wires to connect them up. This is the most premium stack you could possibly purchase currently online. That is 20 by 20. For receiver, we're using the XM Plus radio. This is from FR Sky. I'll have it linked down below and what controllers would actually work with it. For tools, I'm using these hex driver tools. These are really great. I've had them over a year and they give you every single size you need to work on any quadcopter. They give you 1.52, 2.53, and I think 3.5, which I misplaced, but these will open any quadcopter on the market and they lasted really long, which I'll also link down below. For camera, we're using the Cadex Rattel. This is just recently released. The latency wasn't so great, but it wasn't bad either, but everybody's saying it's ha it has really great quality. So that is the reason why I am testing it here today so we can have a review view of it on the channel later on. For motors, I'm using the Mamba motors. These are the 2207, 1750 KV. These are the 6S version. Reason why I chose these is first, they're cheap. Second of all, I've used their 4S brother version, which were really great. So I'm really hoping these are gonna perform as good. And this is why I decided to set it up on this quadcopter. For frame, we're using the iFlight Vertigo. However, yours might look a little bit different just because I have custom side camera side plates that I've uh, designed and cut. So if you want some, email me. Maybe we can work something out. So let's get started. So first step I always like to do since I've built so many quads in my life is prepare all the wires that I'm going to need. I trim them, twist the wire, and then add solder to it. I do that to every single wire before I begin. So I'm going to show you. So here's one stripped wire, which I've twisted. It's very important to twist the wire or else the strands will go somewhere and then it'll short something out and you screwed your whole build. And what I do is I bring the solder and I just have it standing up in the air like so. And then I just come in and then just touch it like that. And that's it. We've just added solder. Next step would be to trim the wires. So next step is to trim the wires. And that's it. I have all my wires prepared now. All right, next step is I like to find the pads that I'm going to need on the flight controller and prepare them by adding solder to them. So we're going to need camera, VTX. Uh, here's the VTX. Here's the camera. Oh, sorry, that's the receiver. And here's the camera wire. The camera's on the quad. So let's find those pads and prepare them. This will make our life a lot easier ahead. So here we see we have the camera pads right here. We have the five volt. And if I do name them wrong, I do apologize. It's because it's really far away from me. So I'm just adding solder on the pads that I'm gonna need. So this is for the camera right here. Next thing, let's go to the VTX. The VTX is gonna be all the way on the bottom. Now this is very, be very careful here. If you're using the same one and you're not using the same VTX as this one because this VTX only takes five volt. For example, if you have uh, some other VTX, you'll probably need to run battery voltage, which I'll show you once we get to the ESC part because that's, that's where you will want to take that from. But right now, our VTX takes five volts, so it's going to be these pads right here. 5 volt, ground, video out, and T1. Now you're like, why do you need T1? Well, T1 is going to be for smart audio. Now, smart audio is to enable you to control your VTX is power, your video transmitter's power, channel, and everything through the OSD menu. So you don't have to come here, find the button, and click it. Because actually, I do not think this thing even has a button, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's really recommended you set that up. And how do you know which is which? Well, red's always the positive or the voltage, the positive voltage. Black is always ground. Uh, the blue one is going to be smart audio. And yellow is always video. Yellow is always video. So we can just go ahead and prepare these like this. And this wire might be too long. All right, so now let's just set up one wire together. We're going to set up the camera wire together, and then we'll move to something else. Now we have video in ground and five volt. Now I'm right handed, so the solder is going to come in through this way. So I'm going to start with the one that's most inside because that'll make my life easier as I go closer to uh, the edge here instead of having to hit another wire by mistake and then just uh, short something out and then just start trying to clean it. So this is, I think this is the best way. It's a really nice technique to know, just see, try to think ahead of the way you're gonna be soldering and which hand you're soldering with. And there we go. And I have my soldering station set to 390 degrees Celsius. And we're all done, as you can tell, looking really great. Nothing is touching, so let's move on. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and solder the VTX here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna solder it on the bottom right there. So we have the first one, five volt, and I'm using the same technique. I'll start from the left and move to the right because uh, there'll be nothing blocking my path as I move. There we go, we have our five volt. 
and here's the smart audio on T1. Now remember, this is very important. T1 is transmit. So it, the flight controller is gonna transmit to the VTX what it should do. So remember T1 because that's what we're gonna set up smart audio to be inside Betaflight. All right, so now the next step is to set up the receiver here. So this is an F7 flight controller. It's very important to take note of that. F7 flight controllers, you can place an S bus receiver anywhere, which is really great on any of the R pads here. So we're gonna use R6. Now, if you had an F4 flight controller, there's usually specific paths that will say S bus or RC. And this only applies if you're using an FR Sky radio. Now, if you're using iBus, um, it'll also apply on F4s, but you can set it up anywhere except the S bus. So keep that in mind. So let's start with the five volt up here, which is right there. And these usually take five volts. If they don't, you probably already know what you're doing. All right, so I've set up five volts. Now I'm gonna set up the signal, which is gonna be my yellow wire. And I'm gonna set that up to R6. And I, you have to remember, now we have T1 here and R6 here. These will come and play a really big role inside Betaflight once we're configuring everything. So we're gonna have to tell Betaflight that on UART6, we are sending the commands through our receiver. And on UART1, we are sending commands to the VTX to change channels. So now, our flight controller is basically complete. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so now the next step is to prepare the ESC. And I do the same thing. I like to go and prepare all the pads before I go ahead and proceed any further. So the way that I like doing is depending on the ESC, some ESCs nowadays are really good. So it takes a while for the pad to heat up. So I like to touch the pad first and then bring in the solder next to it uh, on the pad next to the soldering iron here. And that works great. So you'll see it start to melt slowly. And then once it picks up, it picks up really nicely. So this way you have really good contact and you want to see them shiny, just like this one. And that is looking great so far. So just be really careful. Take your time. Don't be in a rush. If you're in a rush, you might as well not build it because uh, there isn't really much room for error here on any of these types of builds, especially if you have like two phases touching each other then you'll probably have an issue here. Now, some people don't know how to connect an ESC, and what you need to look at is a side that has six pads and six pads. Some other, some other ESCs might have some other pads somewhere. And you wanna put the three left bottom pads together, the three up pads together. This is the way you kinda wanna separate this. Now, however, this one is not really labeled, but we can just, um, we can check the documentation on which is motors one, two, three, and four. However, we don't really have to care that much because the this package comes with a connector that deals all of that for us. That's why we're not gonna have to do much to connect this ESC to the flight controller, except using the connector that they provided us, uh, which will connect the ESC to the flight controller, which I'll show you right now, which we have this connector here we have this is the connector so we just run one wire and we're done which is really nice it does save time that is the most complicated part at times for some people and let's go ahead and add power here or add the now be careful with this esc because the positive is on the the the, the positive sign is on the uh, the pad itself so it will be covered once we set that up however i already know right is positive on this one so we're just gonna just add a bunch of solder here it's really nice to add a ton load of solder to these areas. These areas get so toasty, it's not even funny. I've done a lot of testing or stress testing, uh, capturing the thermal imaging, and um, it, it's, it's, it's insane. The, the amount of uh, temperature increase and decrease. As you can tell, right now I'm having a hard time putting solder on the negative because the negative plane or the ground plane is all over the board, and that is what kind of acts as a heat sink in a way, but it's just everywhere. So it gets harder to solder to the ground pads usually on ESCs. Uh, you could increase the temperature or just uh, keep the solder on there for a little bit longer. So the whole board got hot here now. I can feel it everywhere because of that ground pad. So yeah, just be careful. They are a little bit toasty. All right, so the next step is installing the motors to the ESC. Now, as you can tell, I've already placed it in here and just soldered two sides just to see how I'm gonna show you this because I have aluminum pieces in the way here on this frame. So I didn't think about, you know, if it's gonna be a really easy build to show you on the channel. So let's go ahead and start with this side here. Now this is a little bit tricky. Um, I'm gonna have to come in from here, back here, and make sure I don't touch anything. 
So what I like to do is I like to touch the pad first, warm it up, and then bring in the wire. And then the, the wire can get kind of toasty, so just be careful, you might burn yourself. So that, that got pretty hot quick. And now we're going to do the same thing. Now this is very important that none of these wires touch each other. Make sure there's no little string of wire that's popping out. Now I've done most of them here just because it's a pretty annoying frame. So I like to heat up the pad first and then just bring in the wire here. This might need a little bit more solder. But be very careful, these are really close pads and you could easily bridge them and it's a nightmare to unbridge these two pads together. Not like any other ESC. We've had to actually come in with the, uh, I've had to come in with solder wick in order to fix that. And there we go. How'd that get dirty? It's okay, we'll clean that later. All right, that's looking great. So now we have the ESC and we have the power into place. So we need to look inside the box and find the connector for the ESC to the flight controller. All right guys, so now the ESCs are into place and um, let's go ahead and set up the, the flight controller. So we have this wire that comes with the package. I just placed it into the ESC right there. And we're gonna bring in the little flight control that we finished earlier. And this is the reason why I like to finish it earlier. So we need to find the front arrow key. So this is the back and this is the front. So this will go in like so. All right, so that's in. Let's go ahead and plug in the camera. All right, so once everything is connected, I like to bring my multimeter and make sure it's in continuity mode. And what you can do is grab the end of the XT60 right here, touch one side and touch the other. No beep, we're good to go. Just make sure it's actually working first. So everything's looking great. Let's plug in a 4S and let's see what happens. All right, so this is the moment of truth. I actually brought a 6S and this is a really, really great 6S. I highly recommend for anybody. It's a 1300 milliamp. Uh, Infinity 6S, I really like these. So let's plug it in and hope for the best. Just make sure we're gonna be able to run. Perfect, that's exactly what you wanna see. Flight controller booted, there is signal going to the ESC because it continued with the initialization beeps. VTX is on as well, the video transmitter. Camera, have no clue just yet. Let me go in and bring in a screen in a bit but first let's go take a look at the beta flight configuration part all right guys so now in beta flight before you connect your quadcopter make sure it faces away from you and i'll explain why in a little bit so the front of the quad is facing away before you plug this guy in all right so now we've got it connected it's on com 16 we're going to go ahead and press connect and the reason why you want to connect it away from you now if you lift up the front you should see the front arrow go up if you turn to the right it should exactly mimic the quad in front of you this tells you that everything was installed correctly so that is really great now we want to go to con this is the ports tab this is what really confuses a lot of people here so remember we connected our receiver on R6, so that's UART6. Now some common knowledge or just, you know, common sense probably tell you, okay, enable this and I probably need this. So serial RX will always mean the receiver. However, you do not enable this. You just enable serial RX, which was on UART6. Now we have the VTX, which we set up on T1. So we keep everything off, 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 off. We go here. TBS smart audio good and now we just save and reboot Now some people tell you to go ahead and update your firmware However, I don't recommend that for every single flight controller I like to fly on the default first because some flight controllers will have issues in some updates for example if it was a generic one uh, some of the pinouts might change in a later version and it, it, it could create some issues so just stick to the default firmware for now later on you can go ahead and update it you're not missing quite a lot just yet so it doesn't really matter now d shot 600 is okay motor stop this is if you want your motors to just when you arm it that they're stopped i don't like that this is looking great here Everything looking good. This doesn't have a magnometer. It does have a barometer, but I'm going to disable it because I don't need it. This will tell you the altitude, uh, so I'm not going to need that. Now, here is very important. What I like to do, okay, so dynamic filter, anti-gravity, air mode. Always turn on air mode. So make sure that's turned on. The OSD is turned on. Telemetry, I don't think this one has telemetry. No, I think it does, but we'll, we'll keep it on for now. Everything else looks great. Now we're going to go ahead and save and reboot. Looks good. Now if we go to the motors, this is a very important picture and this tells you which arrow the motor should be the arrow tells you which way the motor should be spinning so now what you'd want to do is you want to go ahead make sure obviously there's no propellers on bring in the battery and plug it in so 
there we go now I have my battery plugged in next we want to go to I understand the risk go to the first one and just spin it slowly and you should see this back motor spin again you make sure the quads facing away from you and this one is spinning perfect so that's great all right now we're gonna go ahead and try motor two and that one actually is perfect I really like it when all of them come out to be good so if a motor didn't spin the correct orientation like this arrow what you can do is go to the conf the beta the BL heli configurator it depends on what you have there's a BL heli s and then there's a BL heli 32 however to skip all that what I'd recommend doing is just change uh, the places of any two mo two wires on that motor so you know how motor one has three wires just take one wire off take the other wire and another wire and then just replace uh, just change their location to the, you know the opposite of each other how they were and then you flipped your motor and you're gonna be good to go and um, so now here we're set now and again make sure that when you move motor one this one spins and make sure it spins this way when you lift up motor two make sure this motor spins and it spins that way so this is very important and everything looks good there's nothing to save here so we're just gonna disable that we go to the OSD and uh, this is how you would set up your OSD you can do whatever you want here um, I like to put the throttle positions in case if a quad has noise so I know if it's uh, in the mid range I could kind of figure that out the name if you have more than one it's really great to have the name so when you're flying you know which DVR footage that was from um, what else no I don't really care about that I like the average uh, where is it I don't think it's on this one maybe we might have to update it but it's okay we'll just save it for now and then we'll come back later on so what we're left with is the modes what I usually do is I set up auxiliary one for arm and I don't use horizon mode I use angle mode uh, this way it's it's just in case for example if a fly or a bee came around me I could stick it in angle mode I know it'll level itself out and I just punch up to the moon and until I you know fix myself or get away get away from that bee or something so that's why I always keep angle mode and I ha usually have that on auxiliary too and what else do we have flip over after death or crash i have that on auxiliary three just like this and you know you just have to figure out how to you know set up auxiliary one two and three and then if you do the same as me here then you should have the same kind of setup and again we'll come back to this in a later video but i think you know the most of the mystery lies in the ports tab now everything here has been set so let's go ahead and take a look at its final form now Alright guys, so this guy is completely set up and ready for flight now since you've seen the beta flight configuration. Now if we take a closer look inside, we still have quite a lot of space in there which is something really nice to have and it's a luxury. However, I will be creating some 3D printed models for this, especially to go on top of the stack because I do not want the receiver and the VTX to be up top here. So they are just double sided just taped up top and I don't want that because I will be setting up my GoPro mount with zip ties and it's really bad if in a crash the zip tie pushed on a component from either the VTX and the receiver and just popped out like a little capacitor or something. So these zip ties here is really great. It has two, I made them become basically two functions. One to hold the motor wires into place. It's not a really rough area here so it does, I recommend tape always but this area here doesn't have any sharp edges so I don't have a high chance of ripping the wire in some sort of a crash but it should be very well tucked in at the same time I'm using it with a heat shrink to route the receivers antenna here as you can tell it's inside there and I've done that for both sides here the back just has a zip tie to hold up to hold the wires overall it came out really nice really clean and it's just looking like an absolute beauty as you can tell right there um, I'm actually quite satisfied with it and I haven't had a quad that it was just a, a one that's really nice to look at now hopefully this thing's gonna fly great and we're gonna see that in the upcoming days and also create update videos on so no more just constantly jumping from product to product I think long long test runs is the way to go and this is what I'm planning on the channel and I'll have a link to everything down below guys if you can check that out those out that's greatly support the channel and I'll see you in the next one peace out